In this video, you will learn how to increase the audio quality in Zoom video conferencing. And that means that your next Zoom meeting does not have to sound like this. With a few simple tweaks, you can drastically increase the audio quality in Zoom. And you can even do it with the things you already own. Let's go. Your next act, Mr. Marcus Seppala. <laughs> How's it going? My name is Marcus Seppala. I'm a stand-up comedian and TEDx speaker, helping you bring more fun to the corporate stage. On this channel, I share a lot of public speaking tips about how you can better engage with your audience, whether that's on stage or on video. Today we're talking about how you can get better sound in Zoom video conferencing and here is exactly what's on the agenda for today. First, we're going to find your best microphone. Second, how to position it correctly. Third, what are the most important settings in the Zoom application. Fourth, what to do if the sound is too low. And fifth, how to avoid the number one most common sound related issue that I see people make when they start their presentation on Zoom. And stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share a bonus tip that's going to take your online presentations to the next level. In the description below, you will find links to everything I'm talking about. There you can also pick up my free video conferencing checklist. Let's start with selecting the right microphone. To get the best audio quality in Zoom video conferencing, you need to use the best microphone that you have. And the best microphone you have is not the one in your laptop. The one in your laptop is probably the worst microphone you have. Have a listen. This is an audio test of the built-in microphone in my laptop. Microphone check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two. Another choice you have is to use a phone headset for video conferencing. The microphone is definitely going to be better than the built-in microphone in your laptop. Have a listen. This is an audio check of my phone headset connected to my laptop. Microphone check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two. The great thing about using a phone headset is that you can normally connect it either to your phone or to your laptop so that you can use the device that you prefer. If you watched any of my other videos about Zoom video conferencing, you know that I recommend using a phone instead of a laptop for video conferencing. And the reason is that the phone usually has a lot better camera and microphone. Have a listen. This is an audio check of my OnePlus 6T mobile phone. Microphone check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two. If you really want to get better audio in Zoom video conferencing, you probably need to upgrade your video conferencing setup at least with a better microphone. One choice you have is to use a PC headset like this one. The one that I have, it's very cheap. It cost me probably $5 15 years ago, but still the audio quality is better than using my built-in microphone. This is an audio test of my cheap PC headset. Microphone check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two. The next step after that is to invest in a proper external microphone, like the one that I'm using, for example. This one is the Boya BY-M1 lab mic. It costs about $30, very cheap, very good. This is an audio test of my lavalier mic. Microphone check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two. And this is a really good choice because I can use it both with my phone and with my computer or my camera or even connect it into a mixing desk. If you want more information, I'm going to put the link down in the description for you. The next step is to figure out how to position your microphone. For most cheap microphones in particular, the closer to the mouth, the better is the rule. And that's the reason why the built-in laptop microphone is such a bad choice because you end up sitting quite far away from your microphone. The phone, the smartphone, is actually a better choice here because you end up holding it pretty close to your face just because the screen is so small. And then when we look at the headsets, whether that's the phone headset or the PC headset, they have been designed to pick up sound from where the microphone is actually positioned. So in that PC headset example, it's actually very close to my mouth, whereas that phone headset is kind of hanging down here, and that's the right place for the microphone. And then for this lavalier mic that I'm using at the moment, this is designed to be a little bit further away from the mouth, about 25 centimeters away, so this is now correctly positioned. Whichever mic you get, just make sure that you check 
what is the correct pickup pattern of the microphone. For example, a USB mic that you're supposed to put on the table, it may actually be designed to pick up sound from the sides and not from the top. So just make sure you know which is the right way to use the microphone that you get. Hit the like button if you got some value out of this video already. Next, we're going to look at the two most important audio settings in the Zoom program. The first one is in the main audio options screen, and it's about the auto adjustment of the volume. If you have a cheap microphone, just leave this on automatic and it's going to adjust it for you. Just note that it takes a few seconds for it to pick up the right volume level. But if you have a higher quality microphone that you're using, I recommend turning off the auto adjustment here. Just find the right level and leave it like that. The second audio setting in Zoom you should be aware of is the background noise suppression. It does work really well in two situations. One is that if you do have a fan noise in the room, and that could, for example, be your laptop fan. This setting can really easily eliminate the laptop fan noise. Another area where I've used it is with my cheap PC headset. Because it's a cheap headset, there's actually some constant noise that is coming through. But when I activate this persistent background noise suppression and put it on auto, it completely eliminates that. So for a cheap headset, I think this is a really good setting to have on automatic. If you have a higher end device, you probably don't need this because the sound quality should be good enough and there should be no noise. And the benefit of disabling these options is that there is less compression of the sound which ultimately will lead to higher quality in your Zoom meeting. Next, let's look at a problem that I initially had when I started using Zoom already five years ago and it was that the sound was a little bit too low when I used my headset. And the solution for me was to increase the gain in the settings for your sound card. So for example, I have this Realtek HD sound card driver there and I can select to boost the gain from the microphone either with 10 decibels or 20 decibels. For my cheap headset, I actually need to put it on plus 20 for it to work properly. And for this lab mic, I need to put it on 10 so that I get the best sound in Zoom. We still have lots of tips to go, but if you already got value, please hit the like button. Now let's talk about testing. And testing is how you're going to avoid the biggest mistake that I see people make at the beginning of their presentations. Namely, they ask, can you hear me? Or almost as bad, I hope you can all hear me. This is a terrible way to start a presentation because it completely ruins your confidence. It's almost like you're making an excuse for yourself or asking permission. And you should never start your presentation with an excuse. I actually have a whole workshop about how you can get rid of excuses when you're speaking. There's a link in the card above me and I'm going to put the link in the description as well. You should never start your presentation with something like, can you hear me? Because here's the thing, people will tell you if they can't hear you. So you shouldn't be asking that proactively, just react if it happens. And in any case, asking the audience, can you hear me, is a terrible type of question because you're not actually specifying who should be answering it. I also have a workshop about how to ask questions to the audience. There's a link above me to that as well. So how do you avoid asking this ridiculous question? Well, the answer is you test your system. You test your system before you log into the Zoom meeting. You test your system once you've logged in with the automatic testing function. And then you also test with the human being. Whoever is organizing the conference, I'm sure they will be happy to do a little sound check for you before you go on stage. And then you never have to ask, can you hear me again? I'm going to jump into my bonus tip. There's actually two bonus tips, but if you got value out of this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for more communication tips. And here's the first bonus tip. If you want to come across as a more professional speaker when you're doing video conferencing, you probably need to upgrade in a separate external microphone. You should probably not be using a headset and look like you're working in a call center. So I recommend some kind of more discreet microphone, like the one that I'm using, the Boya mic, I have a link in the description below, or you could use a USB mic that is just standing in front of you. Something that makes you look a little bit more professional when you're presenting online. 
And tip number two, also relating to audio quality, is to learn to use professional dedicated streaming software. Now Zoom video conferencing is fine for just a normal video conference, but the audio quality is not excellent and you don't have so many choices when it comes to your audio quality. If you use a system like OBS for example, you can make all kinds of settings to make your audio sound good. In my OBS setup for example, I have three different filters. I have one to boost the gain, I have a compressor limiter and then I have a manual noise suppression in there as well. Actually I'm going to put links to two workshops in the description below. Two workshops that I did with the exact same hardware, same exact camera, same exact headset. One of them was recorded with Zoom and the other one was recorded with OBS. I think you're going to be able to hear the difference very, very clearly. By the way, if you would like to book one of those workshops for your company, please get in touch. There's contact details in the description as well. Audio quality is of course an incredibly important part of the video conferencing setup, but so is video quality. If you want to increase the video quality in your Zoom meetings, click the playlist on the screen now. Also remember to grab my free video conferencing checklist from the link below. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next video.